So I want to overview a little bit the ideas of theta, omega, and angular acceleration. You're already noticing that there are some analogs. This is circular motion here, and linear motion has the uh, idea of position also, and that's an x. Linear motion has the idea of a velocity. This is angular velocity, and so linear velocity is a v. And uh, circular motion has an angular acceleration, and the analog is, of course, linear acceleration, or a. So we need to practice this a little bit before we're really good. You know that counterclockwise motion is positive. And that's always the case. I know in linear motion we've talked about your freedom to set up which direction is positive. But in circular motion, anything angular, we're going to be limited by the fact that counterclockwise is always positive. So this way is positive. So if I spin the wheel this direction, then we have a positive Theta. Theta is increasing. In fact, theta can increase arbitrarily. Let's start with theta equals zero right now on the x-axis. And as the arrow moves, I'm going to get theta equal to one radian about there. That's about 57 degrees. And I'm going to get theta equal, ooh, do you know if I go half a rotation what theta is equal to? Let's see, it's half of a circle, and a circle would be two pi radians, so that's pi radians halfway around. And here's two pi radians, and here's three pi radians, and four pi radians, five pi radians, six pi radians, etc. So that's how theta works. But what about angular velocity if there is an angular acceleration? I want you to consider this motion, and I'm going to actually let it slow down deliberately. I'm going to give it a start, and it will be going this way, but slowing down. Okay, so it went this direction, and it slowed down. First of all, we can say that omega, omega was positive, right? But what about the change in omega? d omega dt. Was that also positive? d omega dt, let's do that experiment one more time. The, the thing I'd like you to consider is this. It's going and slowing down because of friction. So d omega dt is actually negative. And d omega dt, well, that's the same thing. d omega dt is the exact same thing as angular acceleration. So that's what we find, that if angular velocity is positive and angular acceleration is negative, then we have something slowing down. This is probably very similar to linear motion. Let's set this up in a slightly different way. I want you to consider omega being less than zero. So now I'm going to be going this direction, here we are, going this direction, but friction again will slow down the spinner. Okay, so it was going this way, omega is less than zero, but which way was it accelerating? d omega dt. Was it accelerating in this direction or in that direction? What do you think? You got an idea? I think the acceleration was in fact greater than zero, and the angular acceleration is alpha, the Greek first letter. So we've got d omega dt being greater than zero and omega being less than zero. That means that it's going to be slowing down as well. This is akin, this is, you know, in linear, we have a very similar situation where uh, if velocity is positive and acceleration is negative, that's slowing down, right? And of course, if velocity is negative and acceleration is positive, that's also slowing down. So I'll try to show a quick example of things speeding up, and then we can move on to something more meaningful. If we have Let's say I want omega to be greater than zero and angular acceleration to be greater than zero. So I'm going to start out going this way, but I'm going to speed up. This is a little bit hard to do, but yeah, 
going faster and faster and faster because it's accelerating in the direction it's originally spinning. So I would expect that the derivative of the angular velocity would be positive as well. Okay, so the cool thing is, the cool thing is with all of this nonsense, we finally have, ooh, let's, let, you know what? There's an equation in kinematics that I call the definition of acceleration. So I'm gonna write down angular acceleration. I'm gonna tell you that it is delta omega over delta t, which is a little bit sloppy way to write it, but you know that that's omega final minus omega initial divided by time. So I can solve this for omega final, and it says omega final is, well, I guess omega final is equal to where you started plus your acceleration times time. And this looks really similar to final velocity is initial velocity plus acceleration times time. In fact, all of the equations that you know and love are here and they're all going to be the same. So let's write out all these equations. We've got four kinematic equations and you know them all and we're gonna have all the same kinematic equations for angular motion. So the first one that we wrote down was the definition of acceleration and that's V final is the initial plus acceleration times time and these are, this is the linear side for us and we'll do the angular side. The angular or circular side will be over here in red and the analog for that equation is omega final is omega initial plus angular acceleration times time. Cool. And another equation that we could consider. Let's say final position is initial position plus, mm, what do we got? We got uh, initial velocity times time. I'm gonna drop out these delta t's, that's kind of silly stuff. Uh, plus one half acceleration times time square. And that equation appears angularly also as theta final equals theta initial plus initial angular velocity times time plus one half angular acceleration times time square. And there's another one, says that final position is, well, I guess it's, well, it's initial position. We gotta consider where we start, right? Initial position plus one half initial velocity plus final velocity. This is one half initial plus final is average. So it's average velocity times time. And that's got an angular analog that looks like this. Your final angle is the angle at which you started plus one half your initial angular velocity plus your final angular velocity times time. All the same final velocity square, tail of two squares is Initial velocity square plus two times acceleration times change in position. Has another analog here. That is omega final. The final angular velocity square is equal to the initial angular velocity square plus two times angular acceleration times change in angle. Awesome. I believe that's all that I want to say about that. Oh, I'll just give you a quick little quiz. Here's the quiz. If I have a bucket hanging from a rope that's attached to this thing that can spin around this axis right here, here's my bucket, and the bucket's full of sand, let's say. There's a whole bunch of sand in the bucket. I want to know, as the bucket falls, what are omega and A doing? You can answer that in the comments, but I hope that you'll be able to figure this out. And this is very different than if the bucket were hanging on the other side, right? Good.